So take a second, subscribe, hit the thumbs up. If you want to hit the notification bell, you go ahead and do that. If not, I'm okay with that. But if you subscribe and hit the thumbs up, that helps us out a lot. If you're listening to us on iTunes, give us a like and uh, leave a review. If you think we suck, tell us we suck, but make it a five-star you suck. Because that's the only thing that helps. Hold on, stop. Welcome back to the Shit Show 2.0. Okay, Boomer. Damn millennials. Wow. <laughs> Did not know that. Even flirters who, who are obviously mentally ill... Oh, this is going to go downhill real quick. What is going on? And welcome to Take on the World with... Yo, it's Trudy Johnny. And... Lexi. And... Mr. Wee. Mr. Wee. Mr. Wee. Mr. Wee. And Mike D. Um, we're going to continue the month of October with our homage to horror movie villains and their backstories. You like that, Lex? Very good. It is. I hiccuped while I had it in my mouth, and I was like, oh, gee, you can't jump at uh, my Ollie, Ollie, come You're here, You're going to break yourself. Come here. I want that food. Why are you just so drink? <clears throat> my goodness. Um, so, we're back, and this week is my choice for movies. Another horror story, Tommy. And Mine was confusing as all hell. Last week, it started off confusing. I think we explained a little bit of it. I hope so. Pinhead? A little bit, a little bit. Oh. So, I have chosen one of the cult classic horror movies. I'll say. One of the best ever. Uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah. And Leatherface. And there is a reason why I chose this topic. Is it because you were chased by a homicidal uh, chainsaw wielding maniac as a child? <laughs> that is not the reason. Oh, okay. okay. Let me guess. You grew up in the 70s. You saw this on TV. We're scared shitless. Oh, this, did, this movie did not scare me. Although it was very well done. Without showing a whole lot of actual gore. Which I appreciate. And we argued about this years ago. Said, you know what I'm about to say? No. Jamie Lee Curtis did not show such and such in this movie. Do you know why? Because Jamie Lee Curtis was not in this movie. She was not. Oh, I'm sorry. We were talking about... Um, oh my god, Halloween. so stupid. Yeah, Halloween. Well, we had that argument. Yeah, okay. We're talking about Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Okay, anyways, moving on. <laughs> mo- mo- moving right along. <clears throat> My bad. <clears throat> I'm, so, I'm ahead like five episodes. Yeah, Johnny Jump Ahead. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> you jumped to a whole other topic. Okay. Okay. So, Jeepers. this is the 1974 cult classic Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The movie was called one of the best and most influential horror movies of all time. And I will tell you, Part of the idiocy that you just spouted out of your mouth <laughs> uh, was true. I, I did grow up in the seventies, and this movie was one of the ones. That, you know, seventy four came in the theaters. Um, I was told I could never watch because too gay. So let me let me ask you this real quick. Violent. In the seventies, <laughs> yeah. would they air these movies on TV? About two did... two years after they were in the theater. Yeah. Was there a commercial free? Time. Uh, HBO mostly, so it was commercial free. Okay. Because right. HBO was, I, I don't know if HBO was back in the 70s, but I, I, I <clears throat> seem to remember like the early 80s HBO being around. I remember my grandfather having what they called, it was a black box. Yeah. Yeah. And then it was somehow intercept all the, like, he, he mainly just watched Baywatch and was like, I can't wait for her bra to burst open. I, I, I've, I've watched scrambled porn through a satellite dish more than once as a child. <laughs> well, what is that, a leg? <laughs> no, use your imagination. It's cool. <laughs> um, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre was shot on a, a minuscule budget, even in that day. 
It's like $140,000. Um, but it's probably one of the most recognized horror films of all time. Uh, the character Leatherface is probably one of the most recognized horror villains of all time. Uh, I know it made an impression on me back in those days. Um, I I always think Texas the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is terrifying because, like, bro, that looks like that field right over there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> bro, everybody has that a chainsaw. That looks like that house right over there. Yeah. He could have dropped that chainsaw on his leg right in the street in front of our house. Yeah, exactly. Like, ah, insane. That, oh, my gosh. I couldn't. No, no, no. So the movie was banned in several countries. And many theaters stopped showing it after complaints about the, the violence in it. But it was like <clears throat> the violence was not gore violence. It was violence. But it was done in a way that, that the, like 70, suspense. the 70s horror movies were done. It, they were, it was done so perfect. good. Yeah. Um, even still with all that, the movie grossed $30 million in U.S. box offices um, with 16.5 million tickets in 1974. Like, how much is that compared to 140000 They, like, made oh. bank on this movie. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope these guys had a whole, a whole lot of back end on this movie, too. Yeah. Um, if you don't know the story, then you've lived in a closet for most of your life because everybody knows the story. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Mm-hmm. But uh, five teenagers go on a Sunday drive. They're going to an old homestead, going through Texas countryside, and they fall victim to a cannibalistic family. And a human skin mask wearing chainsaw swinging killer named Leatherface. Um, John, you see this movie? Oh yeah, did absolutely. You, did you see the remake? I've seen them all with Jessica Biel. Yes. Uh, I actually refuse. I, I like them all. I refuse to watch the remake because you know my feelings on remakes. Yes. And this is one of the reasons why. Um, I, I eventually did watch it, and I, I enjoyed it, but. It was not like the original. Well, no, right. no. I saw the one that I really, really enjoyed was, was uh, I don't think Jessica Biel was in it, but it was the one where, a, or I'm sorry, um, uh, Arlie Army was in it. I think the same one with Jessica Biel. Is it? Is it? I don't remember now, but. <clears throat> so. Um, just the music that, that when he went downstairs and it was like that how do I explain like the music was like the the shot of a camera like it was like and it was just like really just like creepy and it's just yeah. like the old cameras when they were recharging yeah yeah uh it may surprise you but the backstory lever leatherface branches into reality yes so uh while the plot was mostly fictional Leatherface and some of the story's mm-hmm. details were inspired by a murderer and grave robber, Edward Kane. Yeah. I think we might have mentioned this before. The, the butcher of Plainfield. Yeah. Uh, in fact, Edward Kane and his crimes have inspired several on screen monsters. <laughs> uh, I think you said it on purpose that way. <laughs> including Buffalo Bill from Silence of the Lambs. Yes. yes. <clears throat> uh, Norman Bates from Psycho. And there was a couple others that. that uh, they 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 queued off of this. You ever watch his like actual backstory? Yeah. Who's Eggins? Yes. Oh my god! What a sick. Well, dog. obviously I did because my research not only branches into Leatherface's uh, movie background, but we are going to do the true crime of Eggins too. Okay. Because <clears throat> I knew Lexi would love that. Yeah, I actually have some knowledge about or knowledge about this now. Good. I I. I've seen, I've seen the Texas Chainsaw Massacre once, and just once. Yes, because I hate it. Why do you hate it? I hate it because it's just like so close to real for me. It's scary. Oh, it's scary. It's like too that's real. it's too real, right? Like <coughs> I it's love something that gives you nightmares, right? It's something that like I have nightmares about already. Well, that's, like I don't want to watch good. a movie about it. That's what a horror movie is supposed to do. Exactly. If you watch that movie once and got that, bravo. Fucking bravo to Texas Chainsaw Massacre because that's what a movie should do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It just it, it's There's always only one movie that's out. ever done that to me. What was it? Switch hitters. 
Ocean's Eleven. <laughs> There's a movie called Magic. We talked about oh, this. Okay, <laughs> is this that spy thriller? It's a spy thriller. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, backstory on the spy thriller. Lexi's a bitch. I am not. Um, <laughs> no, it was a movie about a, a mannequin. What is that noise? I thought I heard Jack stop. I did too. Oh, you know, know what? That's me. Down. I'm sorry. Oh, I hate you. Oh, my leg was. I apologize. And... Stop. <laughs> and like the claw marks going, like where fingernails are broken off. So gross. Hate it. Hate it. So magic was about a mannequin. Okay. Um, that came to life and killed people. Oh, right, right, right. I do remember talking. And about I was, this. I was a little kid, and I was told. Oh, you, yeah, yeah. Okay. You, you can't this. watch this movie. You can't watch this movie. And after everybody passed out. But mommy, I want to. I went down and watched this movie, and it scared the fucking shit out of me. Right, because it's like mannequins look like they're gonna come after you. And like the fucked up thing is, is I've watched uh, since then, and and just after that, hundreds of horror movies, and none of them have bothered me, but that one did. Yeah, that one just freaked me out to the point where I can't listen to Hearts Magic Man. I, I, like it comes on. And it's, it's, remember we talk about memories? Yeah. That memory comes back. And I, 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 I got to turn it off. Ali has his little paw prints all over your shirt. Yeah. <laughs> is so that what quick. that is? Yeah. yeah. I was looking at, like, what does he have on his shirt? I'm like, oh, shit, that's Ali. <clears throat> so, first we're going to look into the backstory yeah, he's of falling asleep. Leatherface in the movies. And I say backstories with an S. Because, as usual, and I will link this below, Hollywood sucks. Yep. There's Betty. Uh, oh, she's in this movie. Hollywood just cannot leave well enough alone. Yep. Uh, you can't, they can't just have a good movie and build on it or do something original. They have to take that movie and try to destroy it and make it something that it was not originally meant to be. And it always loses something. <sighs> there, was, yeah. there was one with um, Matthew McConaughey. Yes. Yes, there was. Is that in there? I have Am I it. jumping ahead? You are J- Johnny Jump ahead. Oh, Thank yeah. You. All right. Yo, but like, look at, like, I just <clears> want to <throat> say, like, it and is very annoying, John. Reese Zellweger. Please was too. refrain. But I want to say that it's so awesome to see him seeing this research for the first time and, like, his brain turning like clockwork, like the way that it would have when you're reading this for the first time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's really, really cool. Like, who's brain turning? Yours, like you can just, yeah, yeah, as you're we, seeing, we saw research. smoke and everything come out. No, no, not in that kind of way, but like you just see everything click and you're like, Oh my gosh! And then Wait, the, well, that's yeah, when you'll said, say, Am I getting ahead? And he says, yeah, Yes, yeah, okay, I get you, I get you. Yeah. These are like movies it's, that I grew up with, yeah, yeah. I so saw, it's cool. I remember, I don't want to spoil it, but there's yeah. some things I remember from that movie I'll, we'll touch on, <laughs> we'll touch on it, and we're going to come up to that. It's, it's right now, so all right, Texas Chainsaw Massacre was released October 11, 1974. <clears throat> Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, go ahead. Was August 22nd, 1986. It was re- it was written and presented as a black comedy gore film. What do you mean black comedy? A black comedy. Like it's oh. dark comedy. Oh. So Stop. Okay. Uh, no, I thought you meant like no. Only black people are in it. I'm not No. No, you racist. You <laughs> racist bastard. Okay. You know I'm not that. I know. Um the first movie was done in a black comedy style, but nobody took it that way. Everybody just saw the violence and gore <clears throat> and thought, holy shit, this is a great horror movie. Yeah. They did not catch the comedic relief in it. Uh, yeah, I can't see Where? that. I, I, I don't either. <laughs> I can't see that. I, I, after reading <laughs> after reading this research, yeah, look at her. I'd like to go back and watch it again and say, oh, okay, okay, now I see it. But uh, the second I one don't think I would. was almost like a parody film. Um, the third film was Leatherface, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. That was 1990. It was originally given an, given an X rating by the studios. Wow. And then they recut it and got the R rating. Well, li- now, listen, that's what I remember. Like, a lot of horror movies were like, yeah. you're going you to see some titties. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Titties are going to fly. Oh, yeah. That was, like, part of, like... I think that's why, as a young boy, growing <laughs> up in the 70s and 80s, I became such a horror fan because you were going to see titties. Yeah, I like uh, horror movies for other reasons, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Next Generation, was March 12, 1994. Renee Zellweger, 
I forgot Matthew, she was in this. Matthew McConaughey. Uh, the the film was screened as Return of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It was shelved for two years, <clears throat> and they uh, Matthew McConaughey and Zellweger both became pretty big major stars, and they said, "Fuck it, let's release it." So they released it in ninety seven. Did you watch this movie? I have seen it. This is the Matthew McConaughey is so over the top with his. He has like mechanical legs, like, and there's like this whole table scene where they're all at the the, the family table, and they got these hostages, Renee Zellweger, I would suppose. Well, this is before they were big, so and somebody else, and it's just over the top, like ridiculous, like with the mechanical. All right, all right, all right. With the legs and like, <laughs> like she hits him and his leg freaks out and he's like, Wah! like it, it's so it's so weird. weird. It's. And I'm like, I, I it's 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 almost a comedy. I I would have to revisit it was this. Made to I, I would have to rewatch style. this one again. <clears throat> yeah, I would have to say that it's like both kind of horror, but yet comedy because, like, there's right, literally the right. sound of it. it's like. Does he make the sound with his mouth? I wouldn't be surprised if he did. <laughs> that would be even funnier. Maybe Zellweger made it with her mouth. <laughs> wow. Never mind. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I so didn't just say that. So that was that was the event, end of the original installment of this <clears throat> series. Uh, and then in uh, that's a pretty long time frame. Yeah, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, October seventeenth, <clears throat> two thousand three. This was a remake of the original. This was the one starring Jessica Biel, and of course Hollywood had to tweak the story. And in my humble opinion, it cheapens the film. I I. I I just don't like when they try to reboot shit and change the fucking story. Yeah. This is why, link below, Hollywood sucks. I think for this one, I'm going to disagree with you on that. Well, um, like, you have the right to be wrong, and that's what's I, great about America. I <laughs> really, really enjoyed, like, the, the, um, like, the, the, whoever did the music for this, like, kudos to this motherfucker. Okay, the music was good. Like it, well, I don't even think you consider music. music. It was just like sounds, like you know, like like the how the original like Michael Myers was just sound. the sound effects and the music. The, the not not even that. Like the sound when you saw Michael Myers, it's like it's creepy. You don't think so? I think so. I I you know, know that somebody would get creeped out when my um my phone alarm was the Halloween theme. Yeah. <sighs> That's just like the underlying base of the like the whole thing for me. I like I'm in music. I got up, you know. I'm, I like music. It's Michael Myers, so creepy, so, so so creepy. Now let me ask you something. Did you see this one first, or did you see the other one? No, first? I saw the. Of course, I saw the originals first. Right. But I don't know why. I like I, I don't really like this one. Arlie Ermy was in it, and for me, what did it was they set it off with a preface of like, you know, they went to this house got killed and then the cops found the video footage and just that the sound of the 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 camera like snapping a picture and whatever that sound is after it like the like rewinding and there was Char- like the charging the claw marks in the wall and like all of a sudden it was like out of nowhere like a dark hallway like comes leatherface comes tearing at you and then that's how they like kind of start the film so the next one was texas chainsaw massacre at the beginning uh, October 6, 2006. It was presented as a prequel to the remake in 2003. Uh, backstories were changed, and again, Hollywood screwed things up. And again, if you like this one, you're wrong. Uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3D. Excellent. January 4th, 2013. <laughs> it's always great when they do See, that. See, I can't judge it. I haven't now, seen the movie. This one was presented as a direct sequel to the 1974 original. And was intended to be the final movie of this franchise. Okay. But, like, they can't leave well enough alone. It's, it's, you know, it's Leatherface. Fuck it. So, Leatherface was done October... It's a moneymaker. Yeah. October 20th, 2017. And presented as a prequel to the original, again. Uh, this, it takes place in the canon established by the 74 movie. And Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3D. I do now. I don't know if they did it with these two, but I do love 
when films can pull off that retro look with the camera. Oh, I do too. Like the um, Quentin Tarantino yeah. Death Proof. Yeah. <sighs> Come on. Like he pulls off like they, they, that whole eight millimeter. I don't know what, what they used back to film back then. Eight millimeter or, or whatever. It doesn't matter. Yeah. <clears throat> but like Super Eight, even, even Kill Bill it. was done in that style. Right. Yeah. Well, some of it, not with, all of it, but some of with it. the choppy cuts and, yeah. and like yeah. you know, people in Hollywood frowned upon that, that the grindhouse style. Right. But that grindhouse style was what I grew up with. I loved it. Yeah. I think. I think. Furthermore, like looking on this, like when you look at a movie like this, it's not only the what the story is it's like the music for me the I, the cinematography for you well um, the music has a lot to do with it too yeah uh, absolutely like, the, the, like like things you don't like appreciate like that maybe a young person would be like oh i don't know it's just a movie it's like, and, and but, it's, it's not just the music like you said it's the sound effects the way they do yeah, it the sound that, effects that that what, what reoccurs in your brain is that recharging sound from a, a yeah. Polaroid camera oh, you, you can see me you look that up Shit. Huh. Chuck, hey! <laughs> Chuck, a look. What's up, buddy? Chuck's on camera. Hot dog! Oh. Hot dog. Oh, shit. Hot dog! Thank you, Chucky! Oh, How you doing, man? Yeah? Why didn't you tell me he was going up? You're never fucking around. You don't want to answer your phone or nothing, so... You called me? I called you how many times you fucking answer. You did not call me. No, I texted you how many times. You did not text me. I texted you two weeks ago. No, Lies. Not. Lies. No, you're fucking forking at me. What's the matter with you? Yeah, look at him. Uh, let me see. <laughs> you get a knuckle sandwich. Where's that white one up there? Yeah. Brown. Yeah. Put that hell down. The last thing we texted was, was the uh, steak. <clears throat> okay. Don't answer the phone. Better off if you text me. <laughs> I texted him today. He, do like five hours to get back to me. What the fuck are you talking about? Oh my god, you just took no, literally no, 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 27 no, 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 hours to get back to us the other day. Uh, I'm not talking, this isn't about me. Okay, well, I'm <laughs> not you. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm just saying. Thank you, John. I'm going to eat one of these now. So where are these from? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and you're going to heat them up? No, nope. oh, you don't need to eat that fucking stuff. No? Perfectly. All right. Well, here we go. Put that wiener in your mouth, bro. Yeah. Like usual. It's a little bit of mustard. Oh, All right. Need, like, chili. You need a beer, chili? Oh, they make their own chili and everything. Mm. I don't build that chili up at all. I love their chili. A beef, I don't like their chili, though. Now, that much goes, I can love it. Even Coney Island, I don't like it. Yeah. That's why I like. Andy sold 150 of them. I really get, I just like a tiny bit of chili in there. Yeah. That's all you need. My brother Andy, he sold 150 of them for hell. Hmm. They could have hot dogs. They are. Oh, fantastic. David, and he ended up with, uh, I think 20 extra. David bought 10 of them off. David will go home and eat all 10 of them. I don't blame him. They are good, though. Now, fucking Seagull, Jack, he came over. He ordered 20 off them, right? So I had them all at my house. He came over and said, I'll just give them away. I don't want to take them all. Okay. What? I figure I'll bring six up for you. Mm. Thank you, Charles. Oh. And he can't give you one. I don't want any. I'm good. I, I did. I'm good. You don't want it. I'm good. Thank you. Okay. I gave Dad some He likes that. Debbie wants me. That's a rocking hot dog, man. I find they have them again. I never know. They come on a Saturday. Mm. Okay. Oh, chili's on point. Oh, yeah, uh, it, it's not too much. It's not too little. No, it's like a it's little hint there. Yeah. Perfect. <clears throat> That's like, what they always talk about the Crystal Palace, where the guy would line him up yeah. on his arm. Yeah. Think about that. Think about it. He'd line him up on his sweaty arm. Sweaty armpit. Yeah. Sweaty armpit. Uh, uh, That's what gets flavor. Right, but they were good fucking hot dogs. <laughs> I never had them. Never. I wasn't around here. I didn't move here till like mid nineties something. Well, they had them in mid nineties. I didn't go to fucking Reading. I lived in Wyoming. Missing. I was bougie. <laughs> you bougie bitch. I didn't even. I didn't even know what the, the hell County. I didn't even know what the hell Schuylkill County was. I didn't know there was. You gotta move to Schuylkill County. <clears throat> 
Yeah. I want to get a hot dog. dog. Yeah, he can't go out at night. No, no, no. Motorcycle or not. Mm. Yeah, I got one now. You don't want to ride. <laughs> yeah, he got a bike. I yeah, bur- I saw it. I, I saw broke it. my leg on it. <laughs> yep. Now you don't want to ride. Well, we were out today shooting a little bit. Shooting the, the bows. bows. I was shooting shitty. I was shooting like John was last time. Although I didn't lose an arrow. Well, I was I was kind of drunk last time. <laughs> like that was <laughs> fucking five arrows down. Excuses. Lex, can you grab me another October All right, I'm yeah. down. Thanks, Chuck. You gonna be up for a while? Maybe when we're done, I'll come down and sit. Oh my god, that hot dog! That hot dog was on point, bro. And where, 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 where'd you get it from? Elks, Elks, Elks Lodge. Every month, buy them for a fundraiser. My brother ordered a hundred fifty of them. You ever thinking about me next time? Give me like a dozen of them. I'll split them with me and Mike. Give me the money. Well, he might, he might eat all, he might eat all the dozen wow. of them. That one, that one last time I ate it, I ate it just from the way. I can see that. I had four last time. Like, I'm full. We just ate, and I scarfed that thing down. Well, see, I texted him about the hot dogs. He did not text me about the hot dogs. John, that's how he is. <laughs> I will show you every text message I have from Chuck. Tony says it. Tony says that. Tony says I lie. Tony. <laughs> Tony's the best storyteller in the world. Oh, come on. Tony never liked me. Nope. He just told you a story. Mm. A fable. Well, if you're ever thinking of me and those hot dogs come around again? Well, next time they have them, I'll let him know. I'll let you know. I'll pay you whatever you want for them. They're a dollar, I think they're a dollar fifty piece. Yeah, they're not. They're going for a fundraiser. <clears throat> right. To the elk. Yeah. It's a private club. I, lo- I love hot dogs. You can't find like a good like no like shells <clears throat> the, pots the, pots dog <clears throat> in, in that. What the hell's that that place the the hot dog Johnny's hot dog house or whatever out there at the last exit right there right uh, east in there yeah um, Yakos Yakos uh, said no um, pots pots uh, is down there uh, pots my brother goes out there every once in a while to pick them up my dad used to go out there all the time. They're fucking good hot dogs. They put pickle on them. This is probably made by some little old lady. Like, oh, well, the it's old so people make that chili. And family it's, recipe. And it's not spicy. No. That yeah. It don't need I, to be spicy. I can eat that. I don't belt it up. Yeah. I get heartburn off the turn. <laughs> I get heartburn when I look at shit wrong. Like, you know, I take medication every day for this. He's got a vagina, that's why. Mm. I take extra medication. Well, well, you might have a vagina, too. No, I'm just a man. <laughs> my, my... Iron stomach. Yeah. No, I, my I my fallopian that. tubes don't absorb all the acid <laughs> like yours do. No, I take a, I get a prescription for it. Debbie gets it too. Yeah. She has a vagina, so what's the difference? <laughs> well, she should. She yeah, should yeah. get heartburn there then. There you go. Touche. No, she has a mm-hmm. vagina. Well, she has heartburn. Yes. If she takes medicine, so. Right. Mm-hmm. Because she's got a vagina. <laughs> yeah, okay. She'll smack me. <laughs> 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 She'll smack me because I say she has a vagina? <laughs> She'll just smack you because you look ugly. That could be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm going. See, See you, Chuck. Chuck. Thank you. See yeah. you. If you're still awake when we're done, I'll stop down. Oh, it's hot. Oh, yeah. They're banging, dude. God. I'm going to eat Lexi's. Keep that thing away from me. I don't like all that stuff. Stuff. I might eat another one. I don't like mustard. Oh, that's the best. Part. It. Onions? Nope. The little strip of chili? Mm. Anyway, back to what we were doing. So where, where, where were we? The little strip of chili. That's where we're at. <laughs> uh, so we were talking we're about... Right, right, we had just finished the, the prior line. So, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, it says 2021. I don't know that it came out. It was direct. It was supposed to be a direct s- sequel. To the seventy four film, disregarding every other movie in the franchise. See, the, as they the, should. The, this is and where I feel they like, ruin it. And yeah, I know it's a reboot, and then a reboot like sequel. It, Leatherface comes out. He's he's queer. He, he's transgender. He doesn't really have. He's wearing makeup instead of a mask. 
Yeah, it's, um, it's not human skin. It's yeah, it's human makeup. I, just, I don't eat. He, he powders his skin and makes it a powder on his face. <laughs> Listen, um, leather it face. Like they were kind of going more for a Buffalo Bill type type style. Oh, absolutely. Really? Mm-hmm. That's Buffalo Bill's backstory. So Leatherface was the only character that appeared in every installment of this franchise. What other films have Buffalo Bill been involved in, other than the the classic uh, Hannibal? Silence of the Lambs. Silence of the Lambs. Has there been any other ones? I don't know. Obviously this. Because although Buffalo Bill was the main subject in that movie, he really wasn't... You never saw him. No, you saw him at the end with the with yeah. the yeah. you know the basket and uh, he's tucking his dick in between his legs. Yeah. He wasn't that I major me, part of... Me, oh good. <laughs> when you fuck me, yeah. I fuck me. I fuck me. Yeah. Classic, bro. Classic. And the movie that came out after that, not to get off on a tangent, but the movie that came out after that, the prequel to, uh, sequel, Red sequel, Dragon, prequel, yes, Red Dragon, Red okay, Dragon was yeah. really good as well. I liked Red Dragon. See, I now really liked, liked Red it. Dragon. That's a that's a. It was just because it wasn't named. It, Silence of the Lambs. It was a prequel. It's not a remake. It's not a remake. It's it, not a remake. it came out as though it had happened before. Yeah, like this is. Why we are where we are. Oh, I think to, to are we splitting hairs here now? Yeah, it, well, to me, it's like, I don't mind sequels. I hate reboots. When you just take the series and you say, all right, right. let's remake it. Right. Like, I, I get it. It's unoriginal. Like in this series, you go back to uh, 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 the, the 2003 Jessica Biel. It's a complete, it's as if the, the original movie never happened. I'm putting forth the original idea. Yeah. Here's your movie. No, fuck you. I really like the one with Jessica Biel. Okay. I'm just saying because like, Jessica, oh, Jessica oh. Biel's hot. So well, no, it's not that. It was yeah, just it like the whole thing. Like brunettes, it's cool. I do, but they picked up that crazy chick that escaped from her thing, and like they were in a van, like smoking weed. They're driving down this back road, and all of a sudden she pulls a revolver out of her out of her no no spot and blows her head off. Her no no square. Yeah, out Stop. of her, out of her Don't void. Touch me there. That, that is, is my, my no no square. But, uh, <laughs> so we'll take, um, oh shit, what was the one that I wanted to say before this? Uh, what was the one you were just talking about? The the prequel. Hannibal. Uh, Hannibal. The Red Dragon. Okay, yeah. so do you like the, there was another Hannibal where it was a pre, pre, prequel. I have no problem with that. It was, it's like, a, it's a it re- was Hannibal as a kid. Right. Mm-hmm. Did you guys see that one? And it went through like the whole Russian invasion germany war and then he grew up he was like he was mute and then he grew up and did his thing i don't think i saw that one no but i don't know what the hell that was was that the series hannibal no it's a movie but see that was was, i while it it is attached to Mm -hmm. a a franchise it's still an original idea i have no problem with that what what i that my my problem with hollywood is like this throughout this franchise because no originality. Because Hollywood sucks so much. Hawaliality. Yeah, Hawaliality. Uh, many <laughs> things about the character were changed just to fit the time. Ali. Because yeah. it was 1974 when all this started, so things were different then. Well, yeah. instead of instead of continuing on as if it was 1974, they want to make it 2021. Everybody's fucking offended by everything. Right. <clears throat> well, I think the one that I like was because it was it. It was in nineteen in the seventies, and they dressed the part. They were driving the car that was the part. The music was the part. Um, there was Arlie Ermey, nonetheless. He's a fucking rock star. I mean, how can you not like a film with that guy in it? He's a legend. I, oh, I'm sorry, baby. I agree that when I finally watched it, I enjoyed it. Yeah, but it still bothers me that they couldn't. They could have made another movie. And not bolstered itself off the Leatherface name. Right, right. But what they did well, is... Actually, what the hell was the name of that movie? Which one? The one with Jesse Veal. It was called The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. <clears throat> yeah. And then the one it was, was called, called The that? Beginning. Yeah, all of them. The first one was called that. Okay. Wasn't there one that was called Leatherface? Yes. yes. That, that was in 2017. In October 2017. Yeah, I know what you're saying, Mike. I want to hate it, but like that, I did like that movie. Well, and and I'm saying I liked it, <clears throat> because begrudgingly, but I resisted watching it. I did not watch it when it came out. I did not watch it until it was free on TV to watch it. I'm just that's just how I am. 
So um, many things have changed over the, the franchise uh, about his backstory, but some things did remain the same. He was always like a big baby or man child mm -hmm. that was being controlled by this family who were psychos. Right. Uh, and predominantly he, the mother. And yes, and, and he mostly killed out of the fear of the outside world. Yeah. Uh, another constant was a Sawyer, Sawyer family had always been in the meat business. They worked in slaughterhouses. Um, uh, the one they started killing because their slaughterhouse was closed and they were all laid off. The other one, uh, I think they owned a slaughterhouse. I don't know. But a slaughterhouse played a big role in it, and, and that just, it, it had to be that to make sense. Right. Uh, another thing was that they took the meat and they fed it to customers. And that wasn't in all of them, but that was a reoccurring theme. Right. So uh, his real name in Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 was revealed to be Bubba Sawyer. Um, but in the 2003 remake, it was changed to be Thomas Brown Hewitt. And in 2013, it was Jedediah Jed Sawyer. Which technically could also be, like, Bubba could be your nickname. Yes. Bless you, baby. Uh... In the original film, and I, I I knew this, but I didn't know the meaning behind it. Mm -hmm. In the original film, Leatherface wore three different masks. There was the killing mask. There was a woman's mask. There was the old lady mask. And there was the pretty woman mask. Yep. Uh, I'm surprised you didn't know that. I, I did, but I, I, I didn't really connect it to... The underlying thing, that, right? Like I knew he wore different masks, and I knew it was like to, the the women's mask is definitely a holler back to Egin. Yes. Yeah. So, like, but uh, I I knew it reflected his personality at the time he was doing the killings. But what they're saying, as the the writers and stuff, they're saying that he had no underlying personality, and he wore those masks to reflect uh, what he was feeling when he was right. Wearing that mask, right? Which his mood. He, he, right. he used it's like his mood ring. He he used the mask, mask to express Lord. himself because he himself could not do that, which makes sense. But I like I never thought of it that deep. Um, so the 2003 remake and the 2006 prequel took place on one continuous timeline, and it gave the explanation that Leatherface was born disfigured and had a skin disease. He was bullied and mocked through school. So a reoccurring theme to our real life, uh, real murders, uh, things. He was picked on in school, right? Sickly, yeah, and undersized. Exactly. The, the the one thing yeah. that makes you become a serial killer. That's the like the three things. Yeah, that's the hey, trifecta. You weren't here you're, last. You're sickly with, with the, the one podcast that we did. <laughs> this is October now. Uh, but the last one we did, that is going to be put up in August. <laughs> Uh, we we talked about um, who was it? It was uh, oh god um the, the trash, trash bag killer. killer. Yeah, so he was sickly, undersized, and bullied in school. Yeah, and now you know because you were here for other true crimes that that's a reoccurring theme with a lot of these people, uh, even with right. um, uh, Mr. Crowley. Yeah, Alistair Crowley. He was yeah. sickly, undersized, and picked on in school. Yeah. Um, so they said that he was treated very poorly. He was aware he he wasn't stupid, but he wasn't very bright. But he was aware that he's being treated poorly, and he was ashamed of his looks. And wearing a he started wearing a leather mask in school to kind of cover up the shame and cover up the deformities. Uh, and that ha habit followed him into adulthood, and it eventually became a part of him and his character. Um, but not every. Leatherface film has him as disfigured. In the 2017 film Leatherface, it specifically explores his childhood and his teenage years, and the story took another direction. Uh, you're introduced to Leatherface as a young boy who's celebrating his birthday, and despite the very creepy setting of the Sawyer household, he looks like a normal kid. He's not disfigured, there's no skin disease, he's just another normal kid. And in this version, the mask is made from one of his earliest victims, which is Nurse Lizzie, who was the nurse, I guess him and some people escaped from a mental institution, and she was with them. And 
That was his first victim. Cool. <laughs> so cool. Uh, that's pretty much the backstory for the movies for Leatherface. So now we'll get into the real life connection, which is Edward Gain. Um, which I'm glad you made it for this because I know you'll enjoy this. Yes, I will. Um, See, now you say Gain, I say Gain. Okay, Gain. Gain. Mm -hmm. I say Munster. Munster. <laughs> tomato, tomato. Potato, potato, bitch. Anyways, continue. Hey, speaking of potato, potato, did you see the uh, Angry Cops when he was making fun of Space, no. space Force? No. They were watching the Space Force basic training, and uh, one of the drill instructors said potato, potato. Like, oh, I, I did see that, but I didn't see his version of it. And all he did was was just lambaste them. <laughs> I'll put <out> a potato. <laughs> potato, potato. Anyway. Uh, so, the Leatherface character, as well as Buffalo Bill and um, Psycho. Norman Bates. Norman Bates. We're all based on, <clears throat> loosely based on this guy. Uh, and, and when you hear some of this stuff, you're going to see why, because this dude was... Ed Gein was... A nut. Yeah. So he was... Pretty fucked up. He was known as the Mad Butcher, or the Plainfield Cool, or the Plainfield Butcher, or the Butcher of Plainfield. I personally like the Mad Butcher and the Butcher of Plainfield. Because it's almost like Jack the Ripper, like it has that yeah, right, right. cadence. That nomenclature of like, you know, that, yeah. that classic mm -hmm. serial killer... The one name, yeah, and of course, every serial killer's got to have a middle name, sure. Edward Theodore Gein, Jack B. Ripper, yeah, the, the Edward Theodore Buddy. Uh, he was born in La Crosse County, Wisconsin, in uh, 1906, August 27th. Uh, his mother was Augustus Wilhelm, and she is going to play a major role in everything that happens with him. And you could see the branch off between <clears throat> the mask. The mask. You could see the branch off between uh, uh, Norman Bates with her. Yeah. You could see the branch off with Leatherface with her. I mean, deeply rooted shit. Yeah. Um. So his mom, Augusta, and his father Philip or uh, George Philip had a very strained relationship. He was an alcoholic. Uh, he had a hard time keeping a job. When he did work, he was a carpenter. He worked at a tannery, uh, an insurance salesman. Uh, he owned a grocery store for some time, but sold it. Uh, and then the family left the city and moved to the country, 155-acre farm in Plainfield, Wisconsin. Um, I guess so he could drink amongst the cows and the stars. I don't know. Uh, his mother was very, Augusta was very controlling, domineering, and a deeply religious woman. And she isolated uh, Edward and his brother uh, and taught them that all women besides her were naturally promiscuous and instruments of the devil. Just like uh, Bobby Boucher's mom. Yeah. Uh, every afternoon, there was time put aside for them to read through the Bible. She would read whatever. But she would focus on the Old Testament, fire and brimstone, and revelations, fire and brimstone, uh, and divine retribution type stuff. Uh, Edward was shy and had very strange manner mannerisms. Like, they said he would laugh out loud for no reason. Kind of like the newest depiction of Joker. Yeah. Hey, look at that. I didn't even think of that. Hmm. Yep. That newest depiction of Joker, he actually carried a note around saying, I, I laugh randomly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, wait, what? Yeah. Yeah, in, in the movie, it was Joker. It was the movie. Yeah, Walking Phoenix. Uh, he, he would he carried a note around with him, and he would have these outbursts of laughter, and he would hand these notes to people to explain why he was laughing out loud for no reason. Oh no shit! Like, Creep people out. <clears throat> I never. I I because he, he was saw just bits and pieces of the movie. He was just sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's creepy. You do that well, Michael. Thank you. <laughs> Where's my note? You don't uh, get one. There it is. <laughs> A uh, note to you. Um, uh, they they assumed that he was like <clears throat> laughing at his own personal jokes, but like nobody was in on a joke except for him. Meanwhile, th th this was like a hundred years ago. Yes. Over. Uh. Yeah. Over a hundred years ago. Yes. Yeah. 
Like from when he was born. So he's probably what sixteen in the so like damn near a hundred years ago. Yes. Ninety years. That ago? means nineteen forty. Nineteen forty <clears throat> is the next line, and he's like thirty-four years old there. Right. They're talking about grade school. All right. Well, I mean, regardless, it, it was said like fifteen years, years ago. ago. She's just being hyper. Bollock. What do you? What, how many years ago did you say? I said that says nineteen forty. Yeah, that's not a hundred years. Ago. That's when it's his dad died. It's a lot of years ago. Uh, I didn't realize like that you were specifically saying like that you just meant like the whole entire thing happened a hundred years ago. Like, oh. No, I meant to say like when he was la- from the point that he was laughing. I yeah. got it. I John, I was with you. So it might have been I don't know what seventy five okay. years ago. Okay. Like, just to give you like a uh, one hundred. Uh, the reference of time, like this is like before we cell phones. Yeah. Uh, computers. This is like the modern telephone. This is before a telephone. <clears throat> Condoms. You know, you name it. So, um, his mother would punish him whenever he tried to make friends. And despite his poor social development, he went, he actually did pretty well in school, specifically reading. He was a, an excellent reader. So, April 1st, 1940, Edward's father died of uh, heart failure caused by alcoholism at age 66. Edward and his brother began doing odd jobs around town as handyman's babysitting uh, to cover living expenses. Uh, Edward was actually a very good babysitter. He actually related well to kids more so than adults. I can not, see that. Not, not in a perverted way. Because he was a kid and is, and is right. Yeah. You know? That's pretty much probably where his life stopped. Everyone in Plainfield considered them to be reliable and honest. Like, they, they, if, if they said they were going to do a job, they did it. Uh, Edward was very attached to his mother. And any time his brother would speak ill of the mother, like, Edward would be respond with, like, shock and hurt. Like, oh, my God, how could you say that about mommy? Yeah. Oh, no. Um, May 16th, 1944, Edward and his brother, Henry, were burning away marsh vegetation on the property. The fire got out of control through the attention of the local fire company. Uh, by the end of the day, the fire had been put out and the firefighters were gone. Edward then reported his brother missing. He was later found, after a search, dead, face down on the ground. He had been apparently dead for some time, and it appeared that the <coughs> cause of death was heart failure, since he had not been burned or otherwise injured. So, they say not otherwise injured, but I read another report that he had uh, marks on his head. Mm. Um, so the police dismissed the possibility of foul play and officially linked the, uh, listed the cause as death by asphyxiation. It was speculated much later that it was very likely that Edward had was actually responsible for Henry's death, kind of a Cain and Abel type thing. Right. So now Edward and his mother were alone, but it wasn't long after Henry's death that... Um, his mom had a stroke, like a, a massive stroke. And that left her like totally dependent on Edward. And it wasn't too long after that she had a second stroke. Her health failed very quickly. On December 29th, 1945, she died at age 67. He was devastated by her death. So now you're getting into the Norman Bates scenarios. Um, he, he, like, he, he didn't know what to do. His mom was gone. What do you think of here? Good. He held onto the farm, but boarded up rooms used by his mother, leaving them untouched and left pristine, while the rest of the house became increasingly messy. So the rest of the house, and I saw <clears throat> photos of this yes, house. Yes, I've seen photos of this too. It's like, it's oh, gross. the kitchen is disgusting. It, it is like a hoarder's nightmare. Yeah. And then you walk into the mother's room, it's like pristine, yeah. cobwebs everywhere because it hasn't been touched. And yeah. like, you know, maybe maybe he took the stockings from her drawer and sniff them a little bit. Who Probably. Knows? <clears throat> if I remember, I'll try to get some of those those pictures. There's, right. there's like 120 pictures yeah. of, of the house. So Edward became interested in reading pulp magazines and adventure stories. So, uh, I, What's a pulp magazine? Okay, I, I, that's what I was going to touch on. So I didn't know what a pulp magazine is was either. I knew it was like the... the I don't know. I, I know what they are now. I, I assume they were like the uh, almost a comic book of that era. Yeah, but they were like short stories, like adventure <clears throat> stories, or, or but they call them pulp magazines because they were made so cheaply 
that the paper was basically uh, the cheapest form of paper you could make, which was the, 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 that gray paper. Right. Yep. So it was made from the pulp of the trees, and there there was very little actual paper in it. It was just like, yeah, pressed and dried. What are you said? Probably mostly crime stories. Yes, a lot of crime stories, like uh, Dick Tracy type stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> aliens, right? Stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, so horror movies that are horror horror magazines are their time. Right. Right. And according to these Pulp Fiction magazines, particularly those involving cannibals. Or Nazi atrocities, which would be high. Well, no shit. Was this? It's forty-five. His mom <clears throat> dies. So yeah, okay. Forty-six, forty-seven. That's, that's that right was there. But he didn't only read the pulp magazines of that. I. It, oh, the next one says he studied anatomy texts and accounts of the terrible experiments performed by the Nazis at the concentration camps. So apparently, he got hold of <clears throat> some kind of um, uh, text where it like it was very descriptive of what was going on. Uh, the Nazi sure. experiments and shit. I'm sure that shit was probably pretty, like, out there. I don't know. Like, you're talking about the 40s and 50s. Yeah, but Mike, you, you think now, like, you think we're, like, we went to war for that, so I'm sure. Uh, for me, I think that was less subjective because you would write that and say, this is what we were fighting for. Nowadays, it's like, oh, my God, you can't, you can't say those kind of things. I don't know. Prove me wrong. <laughs> he then moved in. Uh, that this is the part where I came into when I first researched this guy. This is what I found. He moved on to grave robbing, digging up recently buried female corpses from the nearby cemetery. He chose the bodies of women who were roughly the age of his mother at the time of her death. He dissected the bodies, keeping the sexual organs and making suits out of their skins. The inspiration for Buffalo Bill and yep. Sons of Lambs. He moved on from grave robbing to murder. On November 16th, 1957, the owner of a hardware store in Bernice Warden, the, uh, the, the owner of a hardware store, Bernice Ward, wo, 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 Warden, 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 Warden. on the day uh, during deer hunting season, the store had very few customers. The last receipt was for the so, a gallon of antifreeze. So the, the, when, when this happened, there, <clears throat> it was deer hunting season. They, only had like five or six customers in the store the day that she passed away or right. that she disappeared. Right. And apparently the oh. night before, little Eddie was there. And I, why he didn't buy the antifreeze when he was there, I don't know. But he was supposed to, the, her, the son of the owner said he, she, he remembers he was coming back the next morning to buy antifreeze. Um, I don't know why that stuck in his head, but that's, this is how he got caught. Well, you know how all criminals make mistakes. They they do dumb things that, you know, in hindsight, when you look at it, like, shit. So while his name wasn't on the receipt, he remembered that that specific guy was coming back for antifreeze the next day. The last receipt was for antifreeze. Right. So. Uh, on the evening of the same day, Game was arrested at a grocery store, and a search of the Game farm was conducted. Oh. Washara? County sheriffs discovered war warden's decapitated and gutted female body hung upside down in the kitchen. She was hung by her legs with a crossbar at her ankles and ropes at her wrists. The torso was dressed out like a deer. She had been shot with a twenty two caliber rifle and mutilated after death. Searching the rest of the house, they found But oh, this is the shit they found. That this Go ahead, read it. <laughs> Lexi, read it. This is some, like, I can't even imagine at that time these people going through this house and finding all this shit. Yeah. I mean, like, you, like you're going from a small town, like, yeah. top to, like, what in the actual F? Lex? In the house they found whole human bones and fragments, a wastebasket of, made of human skin. Uh, human skin covering several chair seats, skulls on his bedposts, female skulls, some with the top saw off, bowls made from human skulls, a corset made from a female torso skinned from shoulders to waist, leggings made from human leg skin, masks made from the skin of female heads, Mary Hogan's face mask in a paper bag, Mary Hogan's skull in a box, 
Bernice Warden's entire head in a burlap sack, Bernice Warden's head in a plastic bag, or heart in a plastic bag in front of Gein's potbelly stove. Nine vulvae in a shoebox. A girl's dress in and the vulvas of two females judged to have been about 15 years old. A belt made from female human nipples. Four noses. Oh Hold on, stop right there. I want a nipple belt. <laughs> <laughs> Close you can come as a studded belt. Why don't you just have four noses instead? How do you attach the nipples to the belt? It's sewn. He has them all like, like it's They're like sewn together. And- like tan and see, stone. Did you see the lampshade? They're insane. I've seen like what I can find on the internet, but I mean, I'm, I haven't done any digging. Like the the nipple belt? No, I didn't. There is a the lampshade belt. made from human skin and human faces. Yes. Oh, right there it is. <laughs> a pair of lips on a window shade draws string. A lampshade made of the skin of a human face. Fingernails from female fingers. I I, I am. Like, they just... Now, what I understand is he only dug up dead people in the cemetery. Did he actually kill people? Yes. Um, Because it says, like, the 15-year-old girls. Like, that were were they... Was he was he gravesite robbing? He was grave robbing. And, and that's what we're going to get into here. He, when he does his did confession... He, did he murder? When he does his confession, he actually confesses to murdering another woman. But then kind of recants it. Or doesn't confirm the details. So the remains of at least 15 female bodies were found in the house. 15 different female bodies. Yes. Edward told investigators between 1947 and 1952, he made about 40 night visits to the local graveyard and exhumed recently buried bodies while he was in a, quote, day's light state. On about 30 of those occasions, he came out of the days and left the graves in good order, and he left empty-handed. On other occasions, he dug up the graves of recently buried women who resembled his mother, took those bodies home, tanned the skin, and used them in his crafts. Uh, by exhuming several graves that Edward led him to um, and looking at what was in them and, and compared to his confession, uh, his confessions were largely co- corrobor- corroborated. Um, soon after his mother's death, uh, Edward began to create a woman suit so he could become his mother to literally crawl into her skin. Uh, he denied having sex with any of the bodies, bodies that he exhumed, <laughs> saying they smell too bad. Yeah, okay. Yeah, he's a freak. I don't think they smell bother. He well, also... I'd dig them up out of the grave and dress them up on my countertop, make skin suits out of them. But having sex, that's way too far. No, that, that, that's over the line, man. <laughs> I mean, come on, I have morals. Uh, he also admitted to shooting Mary Hogan, a tavern over, owner <clears throat> missing since 1954, whose head was found in his house. Later, he denied memory of the details of that death. So he said, yeah, I killed her. I don't remember that. Uh, he was also considered a suspect in several other unsolved cases in Wisconsin. Now, I'm wondering if that was them just trying to pile the cases on him. Probably. Or if there was actual evidence that he was um, guilty in those cases. You know, it's 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 easier to, to make the evidence fit the... How do they say that? It's easier to make the evidence fit the... Crime. The perp than the perp to fit the evidence. But there's, there's a saying in, in, in law enforcement, and you'll see a lot of that where they just hammer on the case and, like, they get fixated on somebody. I'm not saying this guy wasn't a douchebag and probably most likely... You know, I could see how they... Well, he's already digging up people and making fucking skull lanterns in the his house. Is, like, he admitted to it. So, yeah, but still, even that, like, you, like I found, like, you got to make, as a prosecutor, you have to eliminate, because a lot of crime, of people who do crimes, they'll admit the shit that doesn't, they, they weren't accused of. Yeah. Or, or they admit to it, and they weren't the per, the, the perps. So he, he was, anyhow, he, I digress. He was, um, Implicated in a 1953 disappearance case of Evelyn Hartley, uh, a lacrosse babysitter, during the interrogation, <laughs> supposedly during the interrogation, uh, the sheriff, Art Shealy, uh, reportedly assaulted uh, Edward by smashing his face into a brick wall several times. <laughs> I do not see that happening ever. No. 
I have never witnessed anything like that. Uh, so his initial confession was ruled it inadmissible by the judge. Uh, he spent 10 years in a mental hospital, and he was until he was declared fit to stand trial. He was later found guilty of murder, but also criminally insane. He spent the rest of his life in two mental institutions, dying at the age of 77 in 1984. Um, but if you go through that, you can see how those crimes could have inspired... Inspired. Yeah. Leatherface. Uh, and maybe Michael Myers? Myers? You think so? I think uh, Michael maybe. Myers is like a different archetype. He yeah. was a young kid, had trauma in his life, and then don a mask to hide his perception. It depends on which backstory you go with for Michael yeah, Myers, because there's one where he's just stories. a fucking crazy kid. There's one where he's like, you know, he's wearing the mask because his face is fucked up or whatever. Yes. See, so you guys know more than I do. I, the only one—that's well, because there's no continuity with the Michael Myers movies. No. The only one I all. have connection with—that's one was, where they just kept doing it and doing it. He's a kid. He has trauma. Like his, um, what the hell happens? He does he murder his whole family? I think yes, yes, and you yes. Know. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, I don't know. So, so you could see how that could, uh. Norman Bates, Buffalo Bill, and Leatherface could all come from for sure his crimes and right. and, and to come yeah. together and gross thirty million dollars, right? And sixteen point five million tickets in sales. It, it it's I guess the best stories have an ounce of truth in them. The best movies have an ounce of truth in them. Yes, they do. Um, I. I I always get excited when I watch a movie that has, is based on a real story. I just watched a movie the other day. I what just, about that Saipan movie? Yeah, we'll, we'll skip that oh. one. Um, <laughs> Sorry. I searched World War II movies on Xfinity the other day, and a movie came up, and it was, and I, I think I had actually seen it before. It was about one of the concentration camps in Poland, mm -hmm. and 300 uh, of the concentration camp Jews escaped from the camp. There were 600 people in the camp. There was a mass escape attempt. Almost all 600 left at one time. Some of them got killed. Some of them got recaptured. But 300 actually made it out of the camp. Yeah. Um, I, I found that to be an intriguing movie, uh, mostly because there was a, a layer of truth to it. I'm sure it was dramatized and, and all that, but the layer of truth, I think, makes you think deeper into the movies. That is I wonder a, if sure. that uh, that is Leatherface, folks. The concentration camp you're talking about is that Treblinka? No, it was. It, you you went to the one in Austria. Austria. This was in Poland. There was four in Poland. Yeah, but this it was, was the largest one. one. That in one is in Poland. Treblinka was in Poland. This was the largest of the four in Poland. It was Warsaw. Okay. It started with a B, I think. Okay. Falcon Burson. Belgian person. Is that, am I saying that right? That's one of them, yeah. I'm looking it up. I'm looking it up. There it is. It starts with an S. Sobibor. Oh, Sobibor. Okay. Yeah, I was in, uh, what the heck is it called? Mauthausen. Yes. That's what I visited. When you were 12. Yes. Can you imagine that, dude? 12 years old, visiting a concentration camp? Well, I mean, good, because. They sent children there to die at that age. Well, it, it was it was odd because Le Lexi got to go to, to Europe when she was 12. Mm -hmm. And she traveled by herself, mm -hmm. played uh, soccer internationally. Mm -hmm. And uh, when she came home, uh, Deb was going to one of her appointments. And we always let the kids pick a museum to go to. And Lexi said she wanted to go to the Holocaust Museum. And I'm like, Lex, you know, that's kind of really adult. Like, it, it's a very adult topic. I, I don't know if. And she's like, well, I was already to the one of the concentration camps. I already know all about yeah. it. it. You know, it's something that interests me. And I'm like, uh, okay. So we went there. And actually the day before we went, someone had a bomb and there was a bomb threat in there. Yeah. Um, so we went and there was actually a very, very good story of a young man, who a, a child who was in a concentration camp, separated from his family and years later reunited with some of his family. In United States, but it was his story and it was Jacob's story or something like that. Uh, Do you remember? I think so. 
It sounds uh, right. But, like, I went in that museum, and I was emotionally touched, mm-hmm. like, almost to the point of tears. Sure. Looking at at the, the shit that was in there, and and you know, Lexi, just like I just I just didn't think a kid her age would deal with that as well as she did. And Nathan was a but, baby, so know, it didn't like, matter. Like, like you said, like I'm not sure if you can handle it, but you know, look at it. Like they sent kids that age yeah. and younger to go die in a gas chamber. Oh yeah. yeah. So and that's this movie that I watched they said uh, the, the guy mm-hmm. was separated from his wife and his, his child and he goes well when, when will I get back with them and they, 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 the other people at the camp told him if they got separated from you you see that smoke over there that's them yeah. there's a really really on uh, Netflix um, I don't know if you guys can handle it but it's called Einstein's Gruppen and I think I've seen it it's fucking one of my favorite uh, songs is called um it's called Alive with Love or something like that. It's by the name just left my brain. Uh, Alive with the Glory of Love. That's what it's called. And uh, it's about it's like a love story about like his grandparents or his great grandparents or something. And it's about they were in Treblinka, and they were like in love with each other. And they were like the song's all about like if I ever am separated from you, I will find you again. Like I'm always. It's just very very. Good. Just oh, the reason I watched that movie because Roger Howard is in it. Still you don't know Rutger Hauer? Really? No. It sounds good. So if you guys ever get a chance on Netflix, Heinz is grouping, and this is the reason why we fight. Yeah. If there's any, you know, evil in the world, that was it. Rutger Hauer? Hmm? That's no? just other Christopher Walken. No, no. Rutger Hauer was, like, I used to love watching his movies. He was in Blade Runner. Okay. You ever see Blade Runner? I don't know how your back isn't killing you. My back is killing me. Yes, my back is killing me. All right, so anyway, we digress. Um, that, my friends, is Leatherface, the yeah. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and Edward Gein. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So we took that on. You go take on the world. Hold on, stop. Welcome back to the Shit Show 2.0. Okay, Boomer. Damn millennials. Wow. <laughs> Did not know that. Even flirters who who are obviously mentally ill. Oh, this is gonna go downhill real quick. <laughs> <laughs>